Ambitious Stitches Knitting Podcast. Welcome to episode nine. If you are new to the channel, thanks so much for checking us out. And if you're returning, welcome back. This is episode nine. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel, this is a knitting podcast or a podcast about knitting and a little bit of crochet and about being a yarn dyer and having a woman-owned business in Hagen, Germany. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and also I have a web shop where I sell my hand-dyed yarn. You can find all the information to those social media links in my, yeah, in the show notes. So, um, yeah, let's get going. Um, and I don't know if you have something to drink. I don't have anything to drink. I already drank my coffee. Um, but yeah, then grab that and let's get going. Um, yeah, it's been a little bit since I last did a podcast. I have to admit, I have not been a very good podcaster, naughty podcaster. Um, yeah, it's just been really busy in the shop. It's been busy in life. And, um, I very much do enjoy doing these videos. Although sometimes I guess I must seem like I'm totally nervous about the camera, which I sometimes am. But I think that's normal. Um, but it's, it just sometimes takes a bit of time because I don't have anything to show you guys or there's a lot going on in the shop um, where there's uh, shop updates or I have new products coming to the shop um, or I'm preparing for yarn festivals and whatnot. And um, yeah, that leaves little time to do podcasts. But I'm here today. I have um, some finished objects. I also have some things that I'm working on. And if you stick around to the end, I will fill you guys in on our advent calendars, our 2024 advent calendars. That is our, or this will be our, um, I think I the first advent calendars I did was in 2021. So this will be our third year of advent calendars, which is super crazy. I mean, we've been around for six years now about. But that three years in a row, we still have our advent calendars in the shop is pretty cross. But yeah, so if you stick around to the end, I will fill you guys in on all that information about our advent calendar. So I thought I'd start today about with or start with what I'm wearing. This is the flaxseed sweater from Tin Can Knits. Um, this is the very first sweater I ever knit. It's obviously not perfect. It's a little bit short here on the sleeves. Um, yeah, I think the gauge was okay, um, although I didn't do a swatch back then because I think I didn't know it was important. I was learning. Um, but uh, yeah, I gave it a whirl. It is a top-down raglan sweater, raglan obviously, um, with a really cool kind of like design with texture on the on the arms. And I knit this with Baron Wolle. That's that's a yarn dyer from Germany. I don't know if she's still around, but I also believe her wool was the very first hand dyed wool that I ever had in my hand or I ever encountered with or ever encountered when I was starting to explore hand dyed yarn. And um, I think this colorway was something to do with vampires, first blood or whatever. I thought it was quite cool. So yeah, so I bought, I think, I think I needed about five or six skeins, 100 grams. Um, this was a sock yarn, or I'll say it is a sock yarn uh, that I knit this up with. And it's a merino nylon 7525, like you do a uh, yarn base super wash. So yeah, I um, found this in my closet today because it's one of those sweaters that I don't wear very much because it doesn't fit that great. And sometimes that's a bit annoying. Um, and I thought, how cool would that be to share that on the podcast today? Because I don't really talk that much about what I'm wearing. And, uh, yeah, so I thought that would be cool to show. So, yeah, so moving on to finished objects. The last episode I did, I debuted, or I rather showed you that I was knitting up, um, a shawl from Stephen West. This is the Boneyard shawl. Um, and also the very first Stephen West shawl that I ever knit, um, which I'm super proud of because it took a while. Um, this pattern calls for either a fingering or DK weight yarn. I chose a DK weight and I used uh, Merino Cashmere Nylon of our colorway Mississippi um, for or as the main color. 
um, there was a I-cord cast on, which I thought was very well explained. It also has a ridge to it that is a garter ridge, which is super cool. It gives a lot of depth to the shawl. As you can see here, that looks a bit better. Um, it gives it depth. It also gives a texture. Um, it gives it a nice optic in terms of like the wingspan of it. Um, and I really enjoyed knitting it. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, that pattern, I think he suggests one color, but I decided to do two to give it a bit of contrast. So yeah, as I mentioned, I have my Mississippi colorway Merino Cashmere Nylon, and then for the border, I used our Schneewittchen colorway, which is a semi-tonal that we have in the shop that's basically a black shade. Um, here I did a little bit of a boo-boo. Um, you're supposed to do back and forth knitting, and I did knitting, and then I did purl. So that means I have one side flat stockinette stitches, and the other side I have purl stitches. And um, although I think it's pretty because it, yeah, I guess I can also put it on, um, it gives like almost like a nice roll to the border. It's kind of annoying because it like pops up all the time and I don't really like that. So I'm almost considering taking the border apart and doing it the right way so that it's not rolling. Although it looks kind of cool. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? You should tell me in the comments below if you think I should take this out and do it again. But all in all, cool shawl. Um, needle size, I believe, I, I don't even remember what the specs are on this, but if you buy the pattern, it basically tells you which needles are suggested you're supposed to gauge and um, then use accordingly. I believe I might have used a needle size higher than what he suggested for the DK um, weight yarn because um, when it comes to DK, I um, <clears throat> tend to knit it too tight for whatever reason and so that it got a good span and didn't turn out this size i um went up a higher needle size and i thought that was a, a very good decision so yeah the bow and yard shawl so my next finished object is my favorite this is the pressed flowers hat from Amy Christophus, and she is an American designer from, I believe she's from Vermont, and she makes the most beautiful patterns ever. She's um, mostly uh, inspired by nature and by art, and you can really see that in her patterns. And that really caught my eye because I thought that was really fun. I like, when it comes to dyeing my yarn, um, I get a lot of inspiration from art and also from nature, from pop culture, from music I listen to. Um, and I felt like her concept and her design really spoke to me. Um, another thing that I thought was really cool about this pattern uh, when I saw it was that it was a color work pattern. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I must admit, I think color work is really cool, um, especially when it comes to like the Scandinavian patterns where you have this like crazy color work masterpiece going on on the yoke or what have you. Um, but I am afraid that I'm not really a traditional uh, knitter, enjoyer in that respect. I don't think, I, I mean, I have total respect for that. I think it's amazing what people can do with color work. It's amazing what these designers design. Um, I'm not trying to like stamp that out. But I think to myself, if I don't wear that myself or wouldn't wear that myself, then I don't want to knit it. So, um, and that was what I thought was really cool about Amy's pattern is that it was sleek. You could tell that it also, although had an edge to it um, in terms of difficulty, um, I thought it would be the perfect um, color pattern for me to make because I also knew that I could be done relatively quickly with it. So yeah. Um, I love wearing this. I wear it almost everywhere, whether that's walking blue or sometimes I wear it to work. Um, 
and I just love it. It just sits really well. Um, it does say on the pattern that it is from the Beanie family, which you can definitely see here. Um, for the brim, it calls for a, oh, I think it's a two layer cast on. Um, I didn't do that because I don't think I was relaxed enough that day. And for the ribbing, um, she suggests, I think, a one by one. And I just did a one by one twisted rib to kind of compensate for that two layer cast on, at least I thought. The pattern, I believe it's her pattern that says you can use either a worsted or a fingering weight. I ended up using um, a tweed merino or our tweed merino that's in the shop. Um, I felt it gave it kind of like a worsted effect. It also gave it a nice, um, the hat, a nice rustic effect, which um, also was an homage to the other um, yarn dyers that she um suggested in her pattern such as spin cycle is uh, one of the uh, yarn dyers that she suggests for this pattern as well as the farmer's daughter so um yeah i didn't have any rustic yarn i didn't have any worsted yarn i had some sport yarn but i didn't want a hat that was too thin i wanted something that was squishy thick rustic um and where i only had a fingering uh, yarn base accessible to me I decided to use that. I have here, this is our um, Gilded Age semi-tonal colorway. This is in our new tweed merino base that I will also show you guys today. I have uh, several other tonal colorways that I dyed in this base. And what I think is really cool about this yarn is that um, since it is basically 50-50 merino and, or superwash merino and 50-50 non-superwash merino. Um, you can, I mean, here you can't really see with that one strand, but you can kind of, yeah, here is good. You can tell that um, the non-superwash and the superwash that the dye basically, or the yarn basically picked up the color in different shades. And that's super cool. Um, that's what I really like about this base. So yeah, it is kind of fuzzy, just kind of worsted as you can see here, and um, obviously still fingering, but I thought for the optic, it would definitely work for this hat. Um, yeah, so, and then for the contrast color, I used um, Merino Singles that I also had left over from a dyeing session that I did when I first started dyeing yarn. And, um, I've been doing a lot of stash busting lately. Anything that I have left over or anything that I have that I haven't knit up yet, I've been using. Um, I do here and there purchase yarn, but not so much. Um, and I thought I should definitely use this because no, since we're still, you know, doing that whole like rustic thing and fuzzy thing, um, I thought these Merino singles would be perfect in terms of giving it, no, you know, the, the hat, um, still a nice fuzzy halo i mean you can totally see that in the sun right now and um just completely making it you know worth it what i also really loved about this pattern is this whole um texture that she created through the stitches um and uh or the stitches that she then has for the pattern and it just it blew my mind i've never done anything like this before and i just I loved knitting this hat. It was just a joy for me. Every day I sat down and I just loved having the yarn through my fingers. I used a circular needle. Um, she also had really super awesome techniques for, um, for the color work, which were very pleasing to me because when it comes to color work, like I said, I think it's okay, but it can also be sometimes super stressful. So I think that's all the reasons, or one of the reasons I also don't like doing color work but yeah I have a new blog section on my website it is called knit and pen I did a review of her pressed flowers hat pattern so if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about my knitting experience with the pattern about the pattern itself and also about the designer check it out um I will leave a link in the description box below so yeah so those are my finished objects I only have those two hair 
Um, and now I will move on to what I'm working on. I believe I also showed in the last podcast um, the Dotted Rays shawl from Stephen West. I am still moving along. I'm almost finished. Um, this also had an I-cord cast on that was here, which was also quite easy to do. I mean, I definitely used um, Steven's tutorial on how to do that. This one seemed to be explained a little bit differently than the other, but I think that's because this I-cord cast on definitely has a shaping to it, gives it a little bit of a tip. Um, and yeah, I mean, um, this pattern, I would say for someone who isn't really a seasoned, um, seasoned uh, Stephen Westmitter is a bit of a challenge because you really have to pay attention to exactly what it is that he's telling you, um, which I guess seems like a no-brainer. You're supposed to follow, follow the pattern, but when you're knitting and looking and knitting and looking, you can oversee some steps in this pattern even when it's in the same row, and that happened to me. So I must have taken this pattern or this scarf apart at least 10 times. And <laughs> I believe, I mean, no panicking here. I didn't, you know, take this much of the um, uh, scarf or shawl apart um, 10 times. I got to basically like, I wanna say like here. And then I realized my count is off, something's wrong. And then I would take it apart and do it again. Um, but yeah, I guess it only made me stronger. <laughs> Um, and then I basically kept going on. So this has um, a really nice garter stitch pattern to it. It has a lot of eyelets um, that is a bit difficult to see here, but it definitely has almost like a rainfall and a shaping. That's a good perspective. You can see it really well there. We used our Hurricane Twilight for this shawl, or yeah, you know, for this shawl. Um, I have a skein of that here. This is our Hurricane Twilight colorway. It is in our merino nylon sock base, our soft sock fingering. Um, it is a four ply, really cool, squishy, soft colorway. At some point while knitting the scarf, I decided I kind of didn't care anymore because <laughs> uh, I just wanted to be done with it. And I had gotten the gist of it, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, knew technically what I was doing and thought to myself like, yeah, now I can kind of like wind it down, bring it to an end. And then I used the rest Reno singles that I used for the um, pressed flowers hat. So this will be basically the end piece of the shawl. <clears throat> I think it's a nice touch since the rest of the yarn kind of has like a pinkish, purplish hue to it. And um, yeah, like I said, I think Maybe I'll do another inch of that and then I'll be done with it because I just want to move on to the next thing and lock it and wear it and yeah. So for today, um, I actually have an acquisition which I'm very excited about. Um, these two women uh, spin their own yarn in Washington State in the United States and um, at first, when I discovered their yarn, I was a bit skeptic of it, not because I thought it was anything like ugly or bad or whatever. I just thought to myself like, well, that's nice. I don't think that's really my taste or whatever. And then I kept seeing it and kept seeing it basically knit in projects and thought to myself like, wow, um, that's actually something quite special. And I watched one of their YouTube videos where they spoke about how they came about. And it turns out that they were spinners um, who spun the yarn themselves. They dyed it and spun it themselves. And then at some point they realized that the demand was very high. Uh, life changes came about with family and they decided then um, to buy a mill that was being sold, ironically, at the same time. And um, they are called Spin Cycle Yarns. And I absolutely love this yarn. Um, my original plan was to first go to a store and experience the yarn first. Um, I wanted to really see how it looked in real life and not online and see how it felt and just be able to take it in and then make my decision there which colorways I wanted to take with me. 
yeah and since it's probably with the upcoming festivals and whatnot not gonna happen then i either travel to munich or i travel to berlin um i decided i have to i have to order this so yeah it's basically pretty sad that this yarn or i'll say that cities such as berlin and munich are the only carriers of this yarn that i know of within journey germany I don't really sometimes understand why other yarn stores wouldn't carry something like this. This has a really high niveau. Um, it is highest quality um, and these girls really rock it with this yarn. So I can only say to any yarn store owners out there in Germany, you gotta get this in your store because I can imagine that a lot of us out there are really waiting for it to be accessible um, and please do. So I ordered this from Wollen in or Wollen Berlin in Berlin, obviously, and um, super cool store. I've actually visited there twice, and uh, shipping was fast and everything was great. So, yeah, this is 100% um, American wool. It is also a super wash, 150 yards. It's the worsted weight, and it is called Absolute Zero. I thought that Gilded Age and Absolute Zero would go very well together for the Dark Matter call, but I gotta look into it and see what happens. So moving on to the shop portion of the video, I thought today I would show you guys um, the 50% Superwash Merino and the 50% non Superwash Merino base that I just showed you um, for the Press Flowers hat. Yeah, so I'll just show them up. They're almost a, like almost like the most beautiful Easter eggs ever. These are some of our semi-tonal colorways in our 50% superwash and non-superwash merino tweed base. Um, to introduce a few, this is our um, Heart of the Ocean. I mean, obviously it's a lot lighter because the yarn definitely absorbs the color quite differently um, and you know, when I dyed it and also put it in the oven, I didn't want to overcook it. I just basically let it absorb the color as it did. And I think it's really beautiful to hear how the 50% part took on more of a darker tone and the other 50 took on more of a lighter tone. So um, really beautiful. I mean, it does have a bit of a rustic feel to it, but it's not scratchy. I think it's nice and soft. You definitely can feel the merino part. This is our monolith base, our gray semi-tonal that we also have in the shop, almost across all bases, uh, soft sock, um, Lux 100% superwash merino, um, we also have um, merino cashmere nylon decay in um, monolith, and um, again I really love how it picks up the dark and the light. So Then we have Siren, also super pretty. Um, yeah, and the, these skeins will also have a nice packaging that looks like this. It's not the typical uh, Little Vicious Stitches um, logo, but I thought for the spring um, and also for the feeling of the yarn, more of a rustic uh, farm-like presentation would be cooler. So yeah, again, you have this, you know, depth, darker, lighter, um, also a fingering weight, super pretty. Yeah, and here I have Sour Apple. Also looks really, really nice. And you can see too that the yarn has a beautiful halo to it. Totally awesome. I really, really love this dark and light contract that, or contrast that picks up. And this colorway is our Icicle Icicle colorway. This, um, this dye session didn't pick up so much of a contrast you can see here i mean if you look really really closely and in the camera you can also see kind of like little spots that it picked up a little bit lighter a little bit darker but um not really like the other colorways but that's okay i think it also really came out beautiful so moving on to our highland dk um when I was picking this yarn out, I um, was able to uh, see the yarn um, in the wool at the uh, distributor. It was a bit of a hard call uh, at the distributor because um, their fingering Highland wool was also very nice. But I really wanted to have more DK bases in the shop and decided 
to go with that. So this is 100% uh, Peruvian Highland wool. This is our Ursula colorway. Um, it is obviously cruelty-free cruelty and also high Ecotech standard. Um, absolutely beautiful. Um, just, you know, totally gorgeous, super beautiful halo, 50 grams per skein. Um, and I believe the length of the, yeah, the length is about 225, but you guys can check that out in our base section of the website. Um, all of these bases are listed there in terms of the specs. So yeah, you can check these out. So yeah, that's Ursula. This is our heart of the ocean. And you can really see how um, the non-superwash colors really absorb the colors differently from as from um, or as by the uh, superwash sock bases. Uh, this is Gularia. Sorry, the sun is shining here, which is very nice, but it's blowing everything out. Um, then I also have Dark Botany. This colorway is one of my absolutely favorite uh, favorites. It is getting blown out a little bit, but it is actually a tad darker, but really, really beautiful. I haven't put labels on it yet, but here is our Siren colorway in Highland wool. Absolutely gorgeous. Just so beautiful and luscious. I really love this DK base. I will definitely also be getting the Highland wool in um, the fingering length or, th or fingering um, base as well. So gorgeous. I love them. And I also brought up from the studio Merino Cashmere Nylon Wicked, which is also blowing out slightly as well on camera but also really beautiful with a nice halo i know i started off with showing you guys new bases that we had but i also brought other bases up with me um that i wanted to show that are in our base selection but haven't been in the shop stocked lately so yeah then i wanted to move on to some of our speckled colorways that are also in the merino cashmere nylon section of our base selection this is lily pad um this is uh, like i said a merino cashmere nylon 400 meters or 436 yards length um it is also a four ply um lily pad came about because i discovered a new way of dyeing and i technically wanted to dye um our my, my electricity colorway um but to my dismay, but actually to my liking, um, that colorway died up like this and it came out really cool, I think at least. So, especially in the merino cashmere nylon. Um, and this base is really, really soft. Um, you can make beautiful socks out of this or you can make a wonderful shawl. It is so soft. So. Also available in the shop right now in our speckled section of, the, of our web shop. So, um, yeah, and then I have here our Woodland colorway. This is a colorway that's been in the shop for quite some time now. It was originally um, a mini skein that was in one of our advent calendars that we had in the last couple of years, also in merino cashmere nylon. Yeah, and then I also brought up a little bit more of a racier colorway. This is our butterfly effect in our soft sock fingering base. Um, a little bit, of, you know, not so typical of a little vicious stitches colorway, a little bit electric, a little bit, you know, racy in terms of the rain sprinkles, but also lots of fun. And I also have a similar colorway, however, in our luxe. 100% superwash merino base. Um, this is our blind date colorway. This was our February colorway. It is super cool. So moving on to our yarn advent calendars. We have two yarn advent calendars in the shop. 
One is our Nordic Christmas um, yarn advent calendar that is a Scandinavian inspired um, Christmas calendar. Um, last year we did a an advent calendar where we celebrated Christmas in Germany. Um, I thought that would be a lot of fun since the Christmas season uh, in this country is completely amazing. It's such a warm and um, exciting and colorful, cozy time of year. And then this year we're traveling to Scandinavia to um, celebrate the Christmas season in 24, 20 gram mini skeins. Um, the bases that are offered are the non-superwash um, merino uh, base that we offer in our shop also a falk merino base um also quite cool i thought it would be really nice touch to the calendar to make it a little bit more cozier woollier rustic nordic um to have that base included um there are a couple options that you can choose from aside from the but from the yarn base there is um a an add-on calendar with 24 uh, 20 gram mini skeins 24 20 gram mini skeins plus one 100 gram skein and then the 24 mini skeins plus the 100 gram skein plus extras and in the extra sections uh, or section um, i thought it'd be a lot of fun to put in a lot of goodies in there that are really uh, symbolic and um a culmination of the uh, scandinavian season um, there's going to be a handmade ornament in there there's going to be scandinavian goodies um, the packages of the advent calendars will be all individually packed and also provided with um, a string or a garland so that you can hang it up in your house and will all be beautifully packed in the style of the scandinavian culture so i'm really excited about that advent calendar um, they are going fast the non-superwash calendar and or with extras is almost completely sold out so um they are all on pre-order until um may 31st so i really suggest that you guys hurry up and get the calendars before they're all sold out because i will only be making so many um and once they're gone they're unfortunately gone so the next advent calendar that we're offering the shop is the mockingbird lane yarn advent calendar it is a munsters inspired calendar um, I completely loved the monsters growing up. Um, I am anyway a huge fan of everything spook spooky and everything dark and everything gothic. Um, and um, I really feel that although Little Vicious Stitches has a lot of nuances of colors that are a bit lighter and pops of neons here and there, the basis of the yarn that we dye is basically dark, dramatic, uh, rich colors um, that really emanate and speak a language that's old world, castles, Europe, dark. Um, and since the monsters come from the old world, I thought that would, you know, go perfectly together um, and um, would be an advent calendar that I can really channel a lot of my um, yarn dyeing creativity through um, with my own personal touch. That calendar will basically be the same setup as the Nordic Christmas. It'll have these um, several options. However, this calendar is different because it has the option for knitters and it also has an option for crocheters. Um, they will, there will be two surprise makers that will be um, collaborating uh, with me and I with them from this advent calendar. Um, and they are makers that um, either are designers or they are makers that create uh, making equipment for both knitting and crocheting. They also make um, buttons or stitch markers and of the sort that are all with a spooky feeling and touch and whatnot. So yeah, I hope you guys check that out. It's a really fun calendar. It will also be uh, packed uh, or each uh, mini scheme will be packed individually and also with um, a spooky dark touch and feeling um, in the way that the bags are then represented and also with a garland so that you guys can hang it up at home. So, and thank you all so far to all who have uh, purchased our yarn, ad yarn advent calendars. I am completely blown away by the response um, and so thankful because every little bit supports Little Bitches Stitches so that I can grow and um, yeah, allow me to continue doing what I love and that is dyeing yarn and providing you guys with as much inspiration as I feel for your yarn projects and um yeah thanks so much
yeah, so I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in today. If you like what you saw and like to see more videos in the future, please hit our subscribe button. Um, if you're also interested, we have other episodes um, if you're curious. Um, otherwise, thanks for tuning in and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.